and welcome to the York County Government Show. I'm Deb Gruber, your host, and today I'm joined by Carol Anderson, Community Development Coordinator. Welcome. Thank you for having me. Yes, absolutely. You know, we oftentimes have various county departments or county functions specifically that work in the Government Center on our show, but I think it's important to recognize those partners that we work with, and you're one of those mm -hmm. at Community Development. Um, Tell us a little bit about community development and what, what it does. Well, we do uh, economic development financing. Um, we help existing businesses if they want to expand. Um, we work with new businesses that want to come in. We work with people that want to start a new business. And we have loan funds that we can use to help those businesses. Um, we do it in partnerships with banks. And so we're not there to take the place of a bank but we're there to help maybe get a deal done that wouldn't have been done. Mm -hmm. um, maybe they don't have enough collateral or something for a loan, then we step in. A oh, very important function, actually. Mm -hmm. And I, I think some people fail to realize the importance of that when, you know, I'm not a business person or I don't understand exactly um, what the value of having mm -hmm. those businesses are. But boy, if they're not here, we don't have folks that have jobs or we don't That's have... Right. Um, other industry that's paying taxes. Mm -hmm. um, all of that is so very important. So while not oh, directly impacting us, or it seems to not directly impact us sometimes, if we don't have economic development, if we don't have that industry, boy, our, our oh, yeah. community is not the same, is it? Well, and as an example here, um, and, and I do some research, and um, with our loan funds, um, we've helped 71 businesses in Morrison County since 1997 wow. when those funds got going. And those businesses, last tax year where people paid their taxes, those businesses paid $1,261,000 in property taxes. So when you think about that and you think about um, if they weren't there, how much would property taxes on residential have to go up because of that? And those, and since we started back in 1982, I believe, um, the property taxes generated by our businesses are $23.7 million in Morrison County. And when then when you go back and say, well, okay, what's the value of those properties for tax purposes? Mm -hmm. And it's over $27 million, mm -hmm. you know? And so if you don't have that, and you really know, I mean, you're mandated to provide so many services, you need to have a, a tax base so that you can provide the services for roads and sheriff and all of those things that the county does. We do, and when you collect taxes, you don't, you don't get more money because there's more value, but you spread it out mm -hmm. more. And that's what's that's so right. important is that, like you had mentioned, that value component, the millions of dollars of value that the industry, the, the mm -hmm. businesses pay, aren't, isn't then, I should say, passed on to those homeowners. And that's, that's what's right. so important because we'd still need to collect a certain amount of dollars mm -hmm. to operate. We still need so much money to be able to have roads and bridge and police force and all of that but we'd be charging others if that, that industry wasn't there. Yeah, and then you look at it too. I mean, and those employees of those businesses live in our county. You know, they work in our county and they're gonna stop in our shops on their way home and buy their gas and their milk, their groceries, you know, whatever you need. Plus, if they have kids, they're in our school districts around the county. And the school districts then get per pupil um, funding for the school districts. Absolutely. So it's all those things and so Morrison County is really a vibrant and alive community as opposed to some of those maybe in the western part of the state that don't have that kind of industry. Exactly. Now you mentioned something about the 80s. Is that how long you've been around? Yeah, when was uh, that? They actually started um, in the 80s, actually in the 50s. We've been around since for 52 years. Oh, goodness. Started out as a committee in the Chamber of Commerce. And then it broke off off of that into um, community development of Little Falls. And then it developed into community development of Morrison County. So, um, but we've been around, we're one of the, the oldest economic development organizations in greater Minnesota. Wow, mm -hmm. I didn't realize that. That's yes. good to know. And we have 
had the pleasure of working with you for for a while now yeah for about 26 years wow. yeah i love morrison county and the folks here and it's just a pleasure to work here because everybody works together the school district county city mm -hmm. we all work together mm -hmm. and i have heard many good things about you when i'm mm -hmm. out and about in terms of the work that you do and mm -hmm. the value that not only you bring to Morrison County and what we're able to take, well, advantage mm -hmm. of in mm -hmm. a way, Carol, mm -hmm. your, your expertise, but also um, the work you do across the state and mm -hmm. it's recognized. So we're, we're lucky. It's, it's good to have oh, you thank in you. the area. Now you talked a little bit about some of the impact for community development. Mm -hmm. uh, um, talk a little bit more about that in Little Falls, in surrounding communities, um, throughout the county, what impact has has occurred? Who have we worked yeah. with, really? Mm -hmm. Okay, well, some of the names you might know. Um, we really helped start and incubate the ethanol plant. Um, in our office, we were helping them take in their membership money and providing clerical and all of that. And look at what that grew into and the impact that it had in an 80-mile radius here just with their corn purchases. Mm -hmm. Um, so that was a big one. You know, you, we do, uh, we can help retail businesses as well. Um, so you can go up and down Main Street here. Uh, Lynn Furniture was one of them. Pete and Joy's, uh, the bridal shop downtown, we help bring them in. Um, so we've helped a lot of those. Um, Smoothies, uh, sunflower oil over in um, Piers, Rota Molding in Swanville. Um, Horizon Health, we helped them here. That's a nonprofit when they built their uh, facility over here by the golf course. Mm -hmm. We helped finance Ooh, that. Uh, Jordy's Trailside Cafe and Bolus. So we'll help, you know, in some cases, these are little $5,000 loans. And in other cases, you're looking at 50 to $60 million. Mm -hmm. So we try to help everybody. That's good, and because it takes all kinds mm -hmm. to make the economy go. Um, you talked a little bit about loan funds, and you've mm -hmm. talked about some different types of funds that you have access to. Talk a little bit more yeah. about that. Um, it's it's interesting. When I came, we had a loan fund of two hundred thousand. Mm -hmm. um, we've applied for other loan funds. Now we have over two million dollars. Um, we do a lot of work with USDA. Now you think. Agriculture, USDA, yeah. they have a very small portion of the USDA budget, is like 1%, goes for rural development. Mm -hmm. And USDA rural development does um, infrastructure financing for smaller cities for the sewer and water. They help with housing projects, hospital projects, but they have um, what they call intermediary relending programs. Mm -hmm. And so we went back in 97, we got the first one. The city of Little Falls put up 250,000 from their loan fund. That leveraged a half a million dollars from USDA. Mm -hmm. And we've got that money and we loan it out. We loan that out in 18 months. Mm -hmm. And so we went and reapplied for another one, and we got another one, and um, we loaned that out. And as the payments come back, we get to relend that. And so normally what you find, and Little Falls and Morrison County is the only one um, in the state that kind of does this, you don't see a lot of financing for retail. There's a lot for um, manufacturing. Mm -hmm. But where there was a gap was retail and nonprofits for hard assets. Uh, hence came um, Horizon Health. We helped fund all of the kitchen equipment and everything that was in there. We deliberately wrote these loan funds so that we could help retail because you need everything to have a viable community. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you need the retail for downtown. Um, you need the manufacturing for the jobs, and then you need like the health care. Um, you know, to take care of people. Mm -hmm. So we're, we're very fortunate that we also have one now that's countywide. And um, so we also go out to other uh, communities like Piers mm -hmm. and um, Swanville, and we help make loans to businesses there. And it's loans. It's not just giving it's people loans. money. It's it, not it free. Is, it's yeah, it's not a grant. Money. Beware people. Oh. When you see these late night ads on TV and these people are saying, here's your book that you can buy where you can get all this free money, okay? Mm -hmm. And the fact of the matter is, the only one who's going to get 
anything out of that is the company that's selling the book. Um, mm. It sounds too good to be true. It often is, it, isn't That's it? exactly yes. right. Yes. And, you know, it's not easy to go into business. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, you've got to have a business plan, a marketing plan, cash flow projections. You have to know the difference of what's equity, what's collateral. You got to think like a banker. I mean, you got to do a lot of these things. And, and some people find out that, wow, I didn't realize that it's that much. You it know? takes a lot, doesn't it? It does. But we need those folks. We mm -hmm. need those folks to be creative and willing to take those yes. risks. Because mm -hmm. that's how that happens. I mean, mm -hmm. every every big business started with an idea and mm -hmm. um, people having the courage to put that idea into practice. Uh, 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 can I give you a really good example and of please, that? Please, yes. Um, Lawrence Eckblad back 30 years ago mm -hmm. had an idea that he was going to manufacture um, those little plastic things that you hook your electrical wiring up to in the ceilings. They're little white plastic oh, with two yeah. nails. Mm -hmm. And he was manufacturing those out of the garage at his house. And then he grew in the city of Little Falls, helped him move in on uh, West Side Industrial Park. Um, the Shelley's originally helped put up financing to build a building that they leased to them. And then they grew out of that and they grew into their other uh, building, became Central Minnesota Tool and Die. And they then sold to one of their customers, which became Airborne. Mm -hmm. And that's that big 50,000 square foot building out of the new building over in Chief Hole in the Day. Mm -hmm. And they employ close to 100 employees all started in somebody's garage mm -hmm. and so but you know he was willing to go through and learn and did very well it is amazing mm -hmm. and that's quite the business that we have here and quite an asset mm -hmm. it for is Morrison much. County mm -hmm. so if somebody has one of those ideas um, Carol what type of process would they need to go through you mentioned a lot of the work a lot mm -hmm. of the business planning and marketing plans and cash flow projections and all of that but what do they do about accessing some of those fun, those funds. Well, and you know, you need all of that, but um, I always refer people up to the Small Business Development Center in Brainerd. Mm -hmm. And those folks work for free. Mm -hmm. They've got national awards. They are the best of the best. And they're gonna sit down, they're not gonna write your business plan for you, but they're gonna help you do it. You know, and they're going to challenge you because you want to know that this business is going to succeed. Because when you get right down into it, you may have to put your home up as collateral. And we don't want you to lose your home. Mm -hmm. You know, we want the business to succeed. So then they will do the cash flow projections for you. So you can see, well, you know what? My slow months are January, February, you know. So how much do I have to make in those other months? to save up enough to get me through those two months? Mm -hmm. Or do I have to go to the bank and borrow some money for that? And they really sit down one-on-one, -on -one and they're really good. And I will say that 80% to 90% of the businesses that go up there succeed. Really? Because they've got that good plan. And that's and then you're going to have to come back at some point. You're going to grow big enough that you're going to have to go to a bank, and the bank has is going to look and say, "Well, you know, where's your plan? Mm -hmm. Oh, you've got one from the Small Business Development Center. They have a good track record. We believe these numbers. My board will believe those numbers as well, and so you know we can make the loans. And so usually how we work is, you know, uh, if it's a hundred thousand dollar deal. Um, the bank maybe will come in with 60000 um, Bank will have a first position on everything. Mm -hmm. We'll come in in a secondary position with the other 40000 Wow. Mm -hmm. So it's important to lay that foundation. Mm -hmm. I mean, everybody wants mm -hmm. success. And like mm -hmm. you said, it, it really is the only way to accomplish what we talked about in terms of developing companies that employ people mm -hmm. that pay taxes that that mm -hmm. provide a good business for all those reasons so it's important to have that foundation and it's and it's good to know their resources that mm -hmm. are really helpful when it comes to laying that foundation and and there's a lot of help out there and it and it's usually pretty much for free um, the, the Small Business mm -hmm. Development Center can help you with a marketing plan with help you with getting your uh, accounting uh, software set up how do you interpret that? Mm. Um, they just do a marvelous job up there. Well, and I would imagine if there are businesses out there that are 
having issues that they can mm -hmm. use some help on, take a look at what their, their yes. plan currently is, or to take a look at a component of their business that they're struggling with, this is also a resource? Yes, yes. If you're having problems, they also can help you turn around your business. Um, I had um, one case, I mean, um, the banks were going to close the business down on, um, on a Monday, and this was Thursday, and the company came to us and the banks came to us, and so we found some money, but we had consultants come in there. They found out they were pricing one product wrong. And what happened was they were going in the hole about oh, 100000 a month, turned them around, they were making 200000 a month hmm. because of the wrong pricing. And sometimes you don't realize yeah. that, you know. Hmm. And so they can help you find out, you know, what piece that might be wrong. You might as well try, right? Yes. I mean, put a little Absolutely. thought into it and see if you can't make it happen. Mm -hmm. Talk about um, some of the projects you're working on. I know you're always busy, that's busy. for sure. Um, one of the, pro well, two of the projects that we're working on, um, first off, shovel-ready sites. And people hear the word shovel-ready and they go, oh, no, no. <laughs> um, and what the state of Minnesota did was, um, since I've been here attracting businesses, um, has changed drastically. It used to be that we would go and go to trade shows and have a booth and try to meet with businesses. Mm -hmm. um, and now what's happened because of the computer age, um, many businesses hire site selectors so that we economic development people don't know who they are. Okay, and we try to figure out, you know. Um, Carol the detective, yeah, is that you know, what you're so you kind of know, you know, what do you offer this industry? Mm -hmm. But um, so they hire these site selectors, and site selectors are going to go to maybe your website, mm -hmm. which we have a nice new website. But um, they want to look, particularly for the bigger projects, um, a site that is shovel ready, meaning I can. Um, go to, and we have Chief Hole in the Day uh, certified as a shovel-ready site. And I can go, I can find the soil types, I can find out who owns it, I can find out um, where the roads are, where the water is, um, what's the PSI on the water, are there any charges for the sack and whack hookups, um, where are the electric lines, what voltage are they, where is their natural gas, they can see all of that before they contact me. Mm -hmm. And then they look at that, and then, then they're going to come out, and they're actually going to do a look around. Mm -hmm. Okay, They may then pick up the phone and call me, and I'm in your industrial park. Could you please come out now? Mm, you know, goodness. you know. So they really want to be as anonymous as possible, and I can understand why. Otherwise, they're going to get flooded yeah. with other vultures like me, you know, <laughs> trying to get them there. And so um, we, the state of Minnesota, put together a shovel-ready site program and where we identified all of that, and then they sent um, a person to come out and verify it. We were approved for chief hole in the day, and there's a cost to that. I think it's about $3,800. And then they, the state helps market um, that site. Uh, community development then came and joined their marketing program. So we're going to their quarterly meetings so that we can also go on little trade missions to the site selector oh, conference sure. or something mm -hmm. like that. So um, we've got that one set up. Our next one that we're doing is the one on the school district property north of sure. Walmart. Mm -hmm. Um, we think those have the most marketing potential because of the highway and the, the fiber that we've got out there. So that's one project I'm working on. Um, the other one that I worked on for about two years now has been the Food Hub. Yes, that is a big deal. And is going to be having their grand opening yes. April 1st. So it's very exciting. Yes, and it's called Sprout. Mm -hmm. um, it is in existence now. Um, Arlene Jones is running it at the farm at St. Matthias. Got too big. And so with Cheryl Hill's help from Region 5, uh, we wrote some grants to um, the National Joint Powers Alliance and got 200000 to help pay for um, a lot of the equipment that goes in there. And what a food hub really is, a lot of people don't understand it. 
Um, you have a lot of these small farmers that are out there um, that grow and sell their produce, say, in a farmer's market. Mm -hmm. um, what's happening now is a lot of school districts want to buy local. Hospitals do, nursing homes do. And if a school district says, I need 200 pounds of potatoes on Wednesday, and I need them cleaned and sized, mm -hmm. um, rather than call 10 farmers and trying to get them all there, they call mm -hmm. the food hub. The food hub then goes and gets it, has them washed, has them boxed, has them sized, and they deliver them up to the school district. School district deals with one entity. And then the food hub then goes and pays the farmers. And it's so much easier because farmers don't like to be, I mean, they want to be there, you know, raising their potatoes or tomatoes or whatever. And there's, so they have one place that they can sell to. Now, we also have if the farmer that raises the tomatoes has a great recipe for spaghetti sauce. Mm -hmm. And this is an idea, you know, as a small business, um, they need to, I, I've sent some people over to the Ag Utilization Research Institute so they can do the calorie analysis on it, they can help with the sizing of the bottles, they can help with the labeling, um, and then they can go to the commercial kitchens that are there and they can make their tomato sauce, label it, and sell it at wherever, Thielen's or Coburn's or the Purple Carrot if it comes. Um, all of those hmm. kinds of things. So if you want to sell to the public your product, you have to have it made in a commercial kitchen. Mm -hmm. The other thing that they're having in there is a demonstration kitchen. And I talked to Jill Moore here the other day, mm -hmm. and one of the things we want to do is to have um, public access TV mm -hmm. come and show some of the chefs on how they may cook rutabagas or green beans or tomatoes or whatever. That's one thing. Some of and those foods we all produce in our gardens. Yes. And, and what more use. Yep. And also have Ag Extension come in and say, if you want to can those foods, mm -hmm. here's how you can so that you don't blow your pressure cooker <laughs> up to the ceiling. Or you get know? sick because it's not yes, properly preserved. Right. Yes. Yeah. So that's all going to be at the food hub. And then in addition to that, they have a maker's um, market as well. So if you want to sell your bread or meat or whatever, you can do that and have a booth on Farmer's Market Day. But also, if you make jewelry or if you do quilting or if you're an artist and want to have a booth and sell there, um, they're going to have music there as well, entertainment. So they're starting to work now with GRAA mm -hmm. to provide, you know, some of those artists there. Right. So I think this is going to be a real neat place for people to come to Little Falls, enjoy themselves, and take a look at the town and what else it has. I think that's great, and I'm anxious to see that develop because so mm -hmm. many different communities and in different cities across the state you hear of. Yes. A, it almost becomes a celebration, um, mm -hmm. you know, one day a month, a few days a month, whatever it mm -hmm. might be, or a certain day of the week, and the little farmer market gatherings can grow and expand. And, and they can make, nice. you know, look at, at Smoothie Sunflower mm -hmm. Oil, another example. We were proud to come in and help mm -hmm. provide the uh, financing for the equipment. Mm -hmm. um, and USDA came involved, and Minnesota Department of Agriculture, Region 5, the Initiative Foundation, all came together and look how he's grown. The Morrison County record took the picture of the sunflower that's on the label. Mm. So we all helped him grow. Yep, and it is amazing the work that can be done and the work that can be done when everybody pulls together. Mm -hmm. and, and I think that's a great example. And you mentioned all of those partners and how mm -hmm. Um, those at the different levels and the different organizations and agencies really are working hard to make this community a better what place. it is and the be a better place where we want to stay and raise our families, where we want to um, grow old mm -hmm. and have have resources available. So wonderful! Thank you Thank for the you work for inviting me. You've done and continue to do mm -hmm. so work so hard on behalf of the citizens of Morrison County, and thank you for joining us at the York County Government Show, which is aired Fridays at 2 p.m. and Saturdays at 7 p.m. on Charter at Channel 180. Thank you.